damage is going to be so high, partnered with Visage, and of course one stun coming out from the CK or the Clockwork, remaining. depending on if they can land those hooks and Chaos Bolts, which shouldn't be too difficult. Five the potential to kill a hero remaining. instantly is there. I mean, I've seen them run this in the past. The damage burst potential between the Visage and the Outworld Destroyer alone is insane. Like, it's absolutely insane. So we'll have to see how it works out for him. Absolutely. That's such a good point. I mean, just getting that early gank mid could do wonders for them. So we will have to see right now. And But what's also important to note is that I think Fog has really, if they do go on him in the mid lane, there is that potential if he's leveled up with that Rocket Barrage. That Rocket Barrage does a lot of damage and can turn fights around real quick. I mean, I think it's a very good ability. I think that, especially with level 6, if you can get a Rocket Barrage call down combo on people that are ganking you, you could certainly turn a fight around. But then again, they're going to probably be going for a gank earlier than that. We're going to pause real quick as we get into the game. But already, um, everything's looking good right now. And uh, this should be a good series. I'm looking forward to it. I think these lanes are going to be incredibly important. And as you said, I've been looking forward to this as well, this best of three series between these two teams, especially because you got to kind of love the homeboys, right? Like the North American teams comprised of mostly North American players. It's always going to be fun to watch and we can fanboy and all that stuff. And hopefully the sound issue gets fixed for you guys so the people in the stream can actually hear us. But to those of you in-game who have decided to purchase a ticket and whatnot, thank you for supporting and all that good stuff. So... Okay, so we are saying that there should be sound now. Hopefully the people in the chat can confirm that they can actually hear us. So we'll get an update here in a couple of seconds. And it looks like Dignitas is ready to go. Hopefully we are too. And of course, thanks for tuning in. My name is Traskel, joined by none other than Mott of Neo Dota. And this is Killing Spree. It's going to be Liquid taking on Dignitas. This is game number one for those of you who have just joined us. And it looks like both teams are kind of just walking through the jungle at the moment. And we still have yet to see how the lanes are going to be shaping up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We're waiting for him to see what's going to happen here. They're going to throw a ward down here in the top lane. Tides of Time is going to be here with Alley 2000. Uh, of course, we're going to see Fog the Universe roam around as well. Looks like Channel B in that jungle, so sort of a dual lane here. Of course, down in the bottom lane, we're going to see IX Mike. It looks like, I believe, with Bulba and perhaps another hero in this tri lane. Actually, I'm not really sure. Liquid's lineup is rather interesting because they can send that CK mid, which is, it looks like what they're doing right now, at least with TC, but they can roam him pretty much anywhere. So the lanes, of course, I think are a little bit more set for the side of Dignitas, whereas Liquid, it's sort of harder to uh, understand where all the heroes are going. But once we get into the game, we're going to see that. And like you said, I mean, this is North American Dota. And trust me, I cast a lot of this, so I'm always really excited to see North American Dota whenever it happens. So really good stuff here. Already the Invis Rune is going to spawn top, though, and uh, fluff will pick that up. Yeah, there's obviously more useful heroes who can get an Invis Rune at level 1, but he's going to be able to scout things out, get a better idea of what the lanes are going to be shaping up to be. And it looks like everyone can hear us loud and clear on the Twitch TV channel, so that's always awesome. And it looks like it is going to actually be Bulba soloing this safe lane, and he's going to be going up against a Darkseer, and that's not necessarily the best matchup for him. We can see right now that Universe is already doing some creep cutting, so there's not really a whole lot of opportunity for harassment here, but Bulba likely should still be able to see us under the tower. And I believe he was actually pulled regeneration, maybe just because they knew that this was going to be coming, so he would be able to tank the creeps under like so and continue to get his farm. And Fluff, in the meantime, still kind of just scouting things out here. Yeah, he still has that Invis Rune. He's still roaming around right now. It does actually pop off for him just there, as you can see. He's going to throw a war there, make sure that that pull camp is blocked, as you can see. Looking up at the top lane right now, Alley 2000 is alone for the time being. There's pulls happening from Tides of Time, as well as the Chen here looking for some creeps as well. So AUI is kind of alone for now. He's uh, going to be sitting on approximately two last hits, so he's doing okay for himself. But like in the bottom lane you were talking about, Universe is just going to dive right past that tower and just take the creep hits, make it difficult for Bulba to last hit under this tower. That'll be tough, but he's got plenty of re regen like you talked about with the tango so already um still early on but eight last hits for universe is a very good start the one thing to keep in mind about this bottom lane too is that a clockwork is probably not going to get dove battery assault is amazing in one-on-one -on -one scenarios and the only way universe can really play hyper aggressive on this is if he has a full creep wave at the tower when he goes in that's something that is very very difficult to abuse in this situation because one rank of power cogs could just cement him under the tower and just result in a return around kill. So he does need to be a little bit careful, but he realizes there's only one person basically on Liquid's side of the map right now aside from him, and that's going to be Korok, and obviously the, uh, the OD is not going to be going to gank him anytime soon. So both heroes in the bottom lane feeling relatively safe, and in the meantime mid, we can see Fog going up against Korok here. And as it stands right now, it's pretty even. The Gyrocopter is actually sitting at 9-3, and three, so he's beating the OD right now, who's only at 5-6. and six. 
Yeah, he's actually going to look for that rune top. He's going to find it. It's that uh, illusion rune. He doesn't have that bottle just yet. He actually went for Wraith Band first. Uh, so he'll pick up that illusion rune. We'll allow him to pressure, uh, get some vision, or just send the illusions up to the top lane. He's going to try to get back in the lane. NCS, of course, winning right now against Quark. It's still very early on, like you talked about. He's going to go for Arcane Imprisonment on top of Fog. So that's just going to be very annoying, as you can see. Tri lane versus Tri lane. Surprisingly, at 231, not a whole lot of aggression coming out just yet. A little more like dual lane, even though Alley 2000 has sort of been here alone. Of course, Tides of Time is trying to pull right now. They're going to try to sort of block this here. Yeah, they're just pulling the creep away. Very, very nicely done here by Liquid. Just preventing that creep pull, making sure the supports of Dignitas can't get any extra experience. And what's really interesting here is that the Chen is really not going to see too much use in the very early game. It's actually very difficult for an Outworld to be ganked this early on, especially by a Chen, because basically all you have to do is one Astral Imprisonment and some hero is just negated from the gank instantly. So it's very, very difficult for them to apply any pressure in this state. And I'm kind of worried if the Chen is really going to see full effectiveness in this particular lineup, because again, you really want to try to get that early tower, early map control, but they're pushing into a Keeper of the Light, a, a CK and a Visage. I'm just really not sure if that's going to happen. Yeah, that'll be tough. I mean, that's just something that's really difficult to do here. Lifestealer, though, in the meantime, going to try to get some CS. You talked about ganking on the OD in the mid lane, and that won't happen either. Chen is going to look to try to get an early mech as quickly as possible. If he can get that quick mech, they'll try to go and push showers. But like you said, it's going to be difficult to push in that top lane. They will have the bottom lane with that Dark Sir, though. The push timing should be coming from Dignitas relatively soon, and so we'll hopefully see that. It's going to be a little bit of top lane exchanging some right clicks. There's a Riata Rift going on in the out 2000 right now, but nothing else coming as well. That's a very dangerous situation for him. He does have two points into his rage, though, and he has boots. So at the very least, the Chaos Bolt does have a travel time. It's pretty difficult to do if he's close range, but you can actually stop the stun from going off mid-air if you're fast enough. And it looks like Dignitas really wants to try to go on this. They're going to go on IX Mike. There's the open wounds. Here comes the Centaur for the stun. Illuminate goes by. Reverse Chaos Bolt onto Lina, and it's going to be a one-for-one -one trade. And it looks like the first blood actually goes to out 2000, which means 400 extra gold. For him, so a one-for-one one exchange, support for a support, but ultimately, Aoi gets the kill on the side of Dignitas, and Fluff gets the kill on the side of Liquid. Yeah, and that's the good thing there. I mean, Aoi getting the kill on that life steal is just going to provide him that extra gold. You talked about first blood; that's very important. And I mean, he's not getting the most CS in the world. He's only sitting on seven last hits in comparison to the 19 that, of course, TC is getting. But still, the first blood is huge. And they need to continue that, and they need to continue to get those kills to really try to get this lane even, and maybe get some more room for Aoi 2000. And of course, he's such a good farmer. So later, oh, bottom but later lane. this game, Bulba and Universe having a man fight here. Battery assault is it going to be enough? Universe tries to vacuum, but he actually misses. Bottle by Bulba. The battery assault is so close to doing enough damage in the hook shot he oh, gets man. it off in time and universe drops in the bottom lane and that's exactly what i was talking about you man up a little bit too much on a clockwork especially one who maxes battery assault that's 75 damage per tick and bulba gets a kill yeah, that was just such a such a nice play from Bulba, like you were talking about. If you want a man mode on the top of him, Bulba's just going to use that battery assault and he's going to just take that damage, as you can see. Of course, the hook shot just to finish it off. A very nice hook shot oh, as well. smoke as well. They're going to find Chen in the jungle here. There's a router. If Cat's Bolt goes off, Light Striker Ray is going to hit TC, but there's an Illuminate from the back. And IX Mike says, thank you very much for the gold. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but... No, I, I mean, action's happening. You got to talk about it. You can't, you can't worry about the code cast. Just like, boom, action. See what happens there. Of course, Chen going down. We talked about getting that quick mech. That's not going to happen necessarily with that death there. He's level 3 as well, so he's not getting the most farm in the world. But still, they will have that eventually. Of course, Keeper of the Light there with that extra gold is also going to have some nice farm, at least early on. He might go for the mech as well on the side of Liquid. So still a lot of time early on in this game. We'll have to see how it pans out here. Korok not being effective yet, and neither is Fog. They're still just trying to last hit in the mid lane. They haven't really roamed or anything like that. There's not really been a whole lot of movement on Dignitas' side at all, but again, we kind of expected that, and Korok's actually going to not spot Tides here. He's going to get Light Strike Array. There's the call down from long distance. Not going to make contact, though. Korok makes it up to the high ground. He does have Tranquil, so he will be able to get away from this. Unfortunately, the rocket was not used. Actually, no points into it at all, so no homing missile at all on Fogged. Maybe he just was expecting his Chen not to move, which is definitely the right call in this case, seeing as how he just got ganked. But this just goes back to what I was saying earlier about that Chen defensive jungle versus a tri lane who can play aggressive on you and the burst damage potential coming out from this particular lane. I mean, Cat's Bolt at level 2 has a maximum of 225 damage. Fluff can have up to 4 souls right now, each doing 110 and it looks like I actually missed a kill as Clockwork manages to pick off Gyrocopter in the mid lane, so sorry about that, but I really fear right now for Dignitas early game because I think they were relying on it to do a little bit more than it has so far.
Yeah, absolutely. It's something that they need to keep in mind right now. So, um, but I mean, they're doing okay. They've done, they've, it's four to one right now. I think honestly, this tri lane could be doing a little bit better for Liquid. They did pick up a few kills here. They're going to actually use the Illuminate push this tower a little bit here. I mean, I was alone right now, so they do have to be careful. He does pick up the phase boots, which is standard North American play. I feel like I think most people build phase on life sealer now. If you're a North American player, now they're actually going to smoke though from Dignitas. This could be a big pickup here for them if they get a kill or two. Yeah, they have Universe here as well, so he's made his way to top. TC is going to lead the charge in, run right into a Centaur. Where's the stomp? It actually does hit him. The Vacuum's a little bit after, though. TC going to get completely locked down. Light Striker raids there as well, but it looks like Chen is also going to drop. In the meantime, Fluff trying to make it away, unable to do so. Ion Shell doing so much damage. IX Mike trying to retreat to his enemies tier 2. I'm sorry, friend. That is not your base. And Universe picks up a double kill, so ultimately a 3 for 1 exchange. The entirety of Liquid's tri lane dropping there. Yeah, and that's not, that is not what they wanted at all. It is a nice smoke gang coming in. They had to abandon that bottom lane, which gives Bulba some farm, but that's not really a big deal. I mean, getting Universe the double kill is absolutely huge. That's going to provide him some levels as well, some gold. You can see he's got a Ring of Health on him right now, Bottle as well, and he's sitting at oh, uh, level fuck. 8, so he's very close to that Four wall. Four second cast, Bolt in the river. TC jacks the Invis rune. Is Korok going to be able to get there in time? He's going for the body block. It looks like, unfortunately, not going to be able to get a kill out of it, but at the very least, TC being very, very annoying there, manages to take the rune. Absolutely, it's just such a nice little play there. Nakes will actually infest in the jungle as well. Fog sitting at some decent CS though, sitting at 34, and that's the scary part I think. Once you see Fog get some points on a rocket barrage, he's actually going for flat cannon maxing out first, which is an interesting build I think. I like the flat cannon, or uh, the rocket barrage, excuse me, just because it does so much damage, especially against the aggressiveness that Team Liquid will have. But at the same time, uh, TC's getting plenty of farm, sitting at 40 last hits, and they've got you know plenty of potential to carry this onto the late game. But against that life seal, I'm not really sure. Um, we will have to see how it does pan out. There's a roam coming in from Ties of Time right now into the mid lane, but he'll back off as he does spot out that Observer Ward there on the high ground, I believe. Yeah, Tides of Time's been having a little bit of a rough game. His sentry is actually, a l I think it's actually in range, but that ward on his side of the river doesn't have the high ground, so it can't see on the opposite side of the hill, and not to mention he obviously can't go up there by himself because he can't see anything, and it's very, very scary going up there at this point in the game, especially when you're only level 4. So Tide's struggling a little bit here in the early game, but he does have a boatload of wards, and really, that's what supports are for, right? That's right. I mean, he's just going roaming around, trying to get as much vision as possible, and that's what Tide's is good at. I mean, and he enjoys playing it, otherwise he wouldn't play that support Lena role. That uh, squishy, squishy hero. But meanwhile, though, you talked about, of course... He's just roaming around trying to get that vision. He didn't spot out that Observer Ward. It's very, very true. As you can see, he didn't want to go up there. If he did, Quark might turn around and just try to kill him. Of course, Quark, speaking of him, he's got the Hand of Midas done at him. But top lane, there might be some action right now. Nope, Howie 2000 is actually going to back off. But they might try to go for a push here now that they do have way too sexy. With the Ring of Basilius, the Wildkin War Chief as well, they might going to look for some timing here. But a TP rotation is going to come in from Bulba right now. So they're maybe going to try to defend this, but the open wind is going to fly. Yeah, TC is going to get slowed here, but I think Dignitas has decided to just go ahead and back up their supports. Are still on level. Oh, there's the hook shot by Boba. Actually catches two to Chen and Alina both inside. Boba getting nuked down the vacuum outside by Universe, pulling the clockwork out. Looks like Chen's going to die on the right hand side. In the meantime, Tides trying to run away from TC. Is he going to be able to get away? I don't believe so. There's the health potion. Life Striker Ray does not actually land at all. We're going to see Aoi retreating for his life right now. He is Ion Shell, but I seriously doubt that's going to matter. Surge on Universe himself, and we still have a familiar chasing down Aoi. But it looks like everybody from Liquid is going to go ahead and choose to turn around. So nice reaction coming out from Liquid. They got the TPs up here just in time. And this clockwork is actually paying dividends for them right now. Yeah, I mean, it absolutely is. That was an excellent hook chat. That was from super far away. It was right behind or near that tier 1 tower. And he somehow got across the river and just absolutely got so many people. He got two into the power cogs as well. And after that, TC was able to make quick work as well as the Illuminate flying out, doing so much damage already. They're going to try to push this lane as well. The flare going. They're going to try to take this tower or at least put some pressure on it for the time being. Our 2000 is back at full health. You use that in fists to get up to that full health bar. But uh, tides of time and hour are going to try to defend this. And they will back off from Liquid right now. And actually, they're smoking up, and they're going to look to maybe head mid. I'm not sure. Well, they're definitely looking for somebody. If it's mid, then it's going to actually be spotted out here by the sentry that was dropped earlier by Tides. It's got about 30 seconds left. That would be a huge bummer. Yeah, and Liquid's going to run right into it. So they definitely realize we can see the ping out here by Fog already. This smoke gank is not going to be too successful, unfortunately. 
And we talked about the vision, so Ted's time doing his job there, just trying to get all the vision in the world as well as the Chen, of course. Just playing that support role, make sure you've got the vision on the map, save Fog's life, make sure he doesn't go down. He does have one death already, but he's sitting at Treads and Ring of Aquila, and he's going to start getting some farm as well. He does have four points and a flat cannon, so he's actually going to go right for these ancient stacks, it looks like, or just stack them up for the time being. So uh, he's going to try to get farm, and that's important. That gyrocopter can certainly carry pretty late into the game. Yeah, once he gets the items up, flat cannon is one of the best carry potential abilities just because it's a thousand range. It makes supports pretty much negated from the fight completely. You can't walk in or you just get flat cannon down on a couple of hits and the damage output that that hero has with a couple of decent items is obviously very, very high. So Dignitas, very nice defensive warding coming out, preventing Liquid from getting any more of an advantage. And I think during the late game, it's going to be pretty even, mainly because of the fact that CK isn't known as a hard carry per se. He's more of the mid game, I'm going to play ultra aggressive and try to go and get full map control type of hero. Whereas Lifestealer obviously is in the same role, but you have a flat cannon on the gyrocopter to back that up. And then for Liquid, you have an Obsidian late game. So it's going to be pretty much dead even, I think, for the most part, until we start seeing some team fights that start going one way or another in a big way. It's only 7 to 4. And taking a look at the gold, yeah, it's pretty much sitting at zero, and the experience is only like 300 in favor of Liquid, so this game's still far from over. Oh, absolutely, but Liquid's going to try to take this tower. If they can get some gold from it, that certainly could provide them that lead, but I2000 sitting up here trying to get some last hits. He does go for phase into drum. That is the standard build like we were talking about earlier uh, right now, and yeah, I mean, Dignitas has got that carry potential. I don't know, Obsidian and the CK versus the, of course, Nakes as well as the Gyrocopter. It's going to be tough to call. I think that... Uh Depends on the items that you really get up and how you can get that farm. I mean, Fog has been farming very well, as well as the Nakes, but of course you see Korok sitting at 68 last hits himself, 56 for TC. So, like we're talking about, it's very, very easy. So, it's very, I mean, it's just, it's very close right now. And there's actually going to be a TP coming out from Quark. He's going to head to the bottom lane. It looks like they're going to try to go for the hook shot. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, he manages to catch it. That was like a quintuple cancel, I want to say. Universe stuck inside. Definitely not where he wants to be. Here comes Quark with the Arcane over spam. Is it going to be enough? I don't think he's going to be able to get away. The Chen Healer was even used, but no, the ultimate misses. Korok misses with his Sanity's Eclipse. They're going to both retreat. Unfortunately, he waited a little bit too long. I'm pretty sure that would have been a guaranteed kill. In the meantime... Outworld Devourer actually goes for a Hand of Midas against Dignitas, so probably a little bit of a confidence move there, just assuming they were going to have the advantage during the mid-game, they can exploit that extra gold income, and in the meantime, top Aoi being pushed off the creep wave, but yeah, that was a little bit sloppy by Korok, holding his ultimate a little bit too long. Yeah, they should have just went right for that ult as soon as they... I mean, he was really low, and there was really no reason to hold it. And he was able to surge back and escape that. But I don't know if they were expecting the Hand of God to fly out. It just it was such a good time to Hand of God there, coming in from way too sexy. Very nice job, and I gotta say, I mean, they tried to get the Flare kill at the end, but of course, Universe smarter than that. He just moved right away and avoided it, so very smart play. Meanwhile, Liquid's sticking to this top lane. They're actually going to recall. We talked about that ability. Bulb is coming in. He's got his hook shot in A. He's going to fly the Flare. This is going to be tough to defend. Yeah, it's definitely going to be tough to defend this. We see a familiar dropping here. Puts a stun out. IX Mike going to be pushing in with the Illuminate. They're going to go for it. Open Moon's on the fluff. They're targeting him down first. Not sure if that's the best choice. Three second Chaos Bolt on the Tide to Time. There's a Reality Rift coming out. Boba Hook's in as well. Light Tricker Ray's not going to hit much of anything. Tide's actually living through this somehow. And Dignitas with a big turnaround. They manage to catch four. Make it five. Liquid completely drops. Chen sitting at almost no health whatsoever. And Dignitas with a gigantic teamfight win on the back of that Dark Seer, the vacuum, the call down, the AoE damage output, just insane. Yeah, you called it. I mean, that AoE damage was absolutely outstanding. The, I mean, just the TP rotations coming in from Dignitas just to have the presence of mind. They're like, they're going to push this. We can defend this. We're not going to let this tier 1 go down for nothing. And they don't. They, they come in. Universe has that second level of wall. He foregoes the one point of vacuum, but the smart choice there as he's got that second point wall dealing a lot of damage. The call down doing a nice job from Gyrocopter as well. So very nice job from Dignitas wiping the enemy team. And that's going to provide them, I think, gold as well as experience lead by quite a bit of a margin. And that hook shot by Bulba, I mean, he definitely hit somebody, but it didn't really feel like it was necessary. He wasn't able to cut the fight in any way with his power cogs or anything like that. It kind of felt like he just hook shot in, took a lot of damage, and then life was very, very difficult for Liquid from that point on. It looks like Fluff letting everybody know that Glyph is uh, about 14 minutes right now, so that means that they're looking for some kind of a push. And yeah, Aoi just putting it out. 15.33 is apparently the proper timing. That shift button can be troublesome from time to time. I feel you, I feel you Fluff. I, have, I understand your pain right now. Well, as it stands right now, it's 7-9. Dignitas putting a big 
big win on the board in terms of team fight. We can see the gold dip. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit severe, I'd say, for 16 minutes in. Looking at about close to 3,000 gold in their favor now. And wow, the experience is really the story. <laughs> Sitting at just over 5,000 in favor of Dignitas at the moment. So still a lot of Dota to be played here. We can see the Outworld Devourer is still sitting on top of the net worth. He's sitting at about 6,000 gold. He's got an Oblivion Staff picked up, so it looks like he's actually going for an Orchid, not going for a Hex or a BKB or a Mech or anything like that at all. Actually, it's going to be Clockwork on the side of Liquid who's going for the Mech. I think that's a smart pickup there, of course. Clockwork was in that side lane. He did get a bit of farm. Korok just needs to be able to provide damage, and I think going for the Orkham Levelance will certainly provide that as well as just make it difficult for heroes like the Gyrocopter or even, I think, better on Universe just to silence and make sure lane. he can't get it. I X Mike, open wounds. Owie with one more auto attack going to be able to get the kill. Man, that is incredibly hard to outrun. Look at how fast he is. Four. 84 move speed with phase on with the drums of endurance. He's gonna have his armlet done here in just a second And Aoi continues to be a very very big threat looking so far Dignitas three heroes basically tied at the same net worth as the highest of liquid right now But that's gonna be really nice to have and I mean Mike should really know better He's played against enough of, uh, of the FNC style makes with the phase with the drum to know how fast and he was alone So I'm not really sure what he was planning on doing there trying to push the lane out But Aoi just came in and just right clicked him down who's speaking of which is gonna pick up an armlet as well um Right now, down in the bottom lane, Universe is here, of course, with Tides of Time. They're going to push out the bottom lane here, and now it looks like Liquid's just trying to farm up, realizing that they're a little bit behind. TC desperately needs some farm here. They de they're trying to get kills, and he's trying to get an armlet of its own, but it's going to be a little far behind, as you see Bulba rotating up to the top lane as well, trying to get that mech like you talked about. Uh, as that side lane hero, he's going to be able to get that gold up early. Yeah, I'm really hoping to see a mech pretty soon on either side. It's interesting because 18 minutes in, there's obviously been a lot of team fighting. There's 17 kills on the board. A couple of towers have gone down. Actually, scratch that, only one tower has gone down, and that's Dignitas. Their tier one top fell earlier during that engagement where they actually managed to kill five heroes. So it's interesting to me that they let the Chen go for the mech, even though Universe had such great farm. He actually decided to pick up a Vanguard. He's going for the pipe now. In the meantime, they're going to go ahead and smoke up. But... It's kind of weird because typically if he had the mech, that would have been an even bigger win for Dignitas. But delaying a little bit, I guess, allowing the Chen to get it because he's not going to get another big core item anyway. Maybe like a four staff or an Agonims if he gets super rich. Just the decision making for me for Dignitas is a little bit interesting. I, I certainly, I think that the uh, pipe pickup for the Dark Seer is a definitely a good choice just because of the fact that Illuminate just does so much damage. They want to get that Chen to get that mech. I think they made that plan early on. Uh, he will have it very soon, but I mean, the pipe is just so great against Illuminate. I mean, you think about the, some of the other spells as well, Soul Assumption, um, of course, the Cast Bolt, nice to have as well. Smoke Gank coming out, though, from Liquid as well, so they're both looking for kills here. Uh, they might actually find Fog in the bottom lane, who actually used his call down there, trying to get it on Korok. But now Fog's in a bit of trouble here, maybe. Oh man, he's gonna walk right into it. TC walks up to the high ground, pops the armlet, and the familiars get vision. Four second Chaos Bolt. Fog is not gonna be living through this. I'm sorry, but that is just a little bit too much burst damage. Ike Spike actually calls in Bulba as well, so they're going full in here. Gonna go for the tier one in the meantime. Dignitas gonna go ahead and counter push. Universe getting the tower kill on that tier one. We're gonna see Tide DP back already, so that's a pretty early reaction. Maybe Dignitas is looking to fight at their tier two. I definitely wouldn't put it past them considering how well the last tower defense they did went. So it looks like everyone from Dignitas going to be looping around Liquid in the meantime, farming some Ancients. That could be a mistake. Open Wounds on the fluff. Aoi's the first one in. He's actually got the armlet on already. Nice Astro Prismate coming out from Korok. Going to buy him some time. Tide stuck in a cog. In the meantime, getting Battery Assaulted down. There's a Soul Assumption to get the kill. Three second Chaos Bolt on Universe. And the Sanity's Eclipse as well. Not going to make the same mistake twice. And two from Dignitas actually make that three. All drop and Liquid looking for a possible Roshan attempt right here. And Aoi's still stuck in the middle of this entire team fight. Cog then. Bulba doesn't want to be here. He hits the wrong Cog. He hits the wrong Cog. And Aoi oh no, kills him. Bulba. Chen comes in from the back and manages to pick off Visage as well. There is one more auto coming out from Korok. Now he's turning around. He wants more. Bugs back in the fight though. Finally resurrected. Nice imprisonment once again. The damage from the Rocket Barrage still doing a little bit. And Korok manages to get Chen. Can Fog chase him down in time? There's a homing missile going off. Is it actually going to catch him? The Chen creeps are still chasing him down. Aoi, unfortunately, as manly as he was, ended up dying after those cogs wore off and the familiar being uh, being pretty annoying here. Oh, nice Astral Imprisonment. Very nice. Yeah, I've I'm got to say. I can prison himself to save him from the rocket, yeah. I've got to say, 
I think Quark was the MVP of that fight. He astral imprisonment like three or four people that were really, really going to do a lot of damage there. I think the Nakes was astral imprisonment for quite a long time. They did lose Bulba, unfortunately, just with that mistake by going on the wrong cog. A little unfortunate, as you can see, he ran right into the cliff. He couldn't go any further. But, I mean, that was a really great defense, or excuse me, fight from Liquid, who, I mean, it looked like Dignitas was going to be able to take that fight just fine, but they all sort of rotated in, you know, sporadically. They didn't get the fight off in time. They didn't really go for it, uh, you know, at the same time, as you can see. And just the damage coming in from the side of Liquid, the Sanity's Eclipse, as well as the right-click damage, was enough to really even the game up in terms of kills. It's 12 to 12 right now, so they're looking okay. Uh, the graph is back at even for experience, and gold also back at even, so they're looking very good. And now, Dignitas wants to go to Roshan, though. It definitely wouldn't be a bad choice, especially considering they have everything up at the moment. They got the Derek Seer wall, they got the call down. Call down, not really the longest cooldown ultimate ever. It's only 50 seconds, actually goes down 5 seconds per rank, so they're probably going to get this. I mean, Liquid is coming in here. They don't have Sanity's Eclipse. It's still got 45 seconds, and that's a pretty large chunk of damage coming out from Liquid that's not going to be there. Oh, Orchid up from the high ground. Really nice pickoff. Looks like Liquid is going to try to fight this call down and the vacuum. Unfortunately, the wall hits absolutely nothing. Soul Sun's going to go off on the tides. <clears throat> Unfortunately, not able to get the kill. Korak very low as well. And two second chaos bolt. Looks like both teams are going to try to split here. No fog once more. He's on the chase. Nice four step coming to the TC after the open wounds. Homing missile is going to land. I don't think TC is going to be able to get away from this. Nice imprisonment, but I don't think it's going to save him. Unfortunately, he's completely surrounded. No, the phantasm comes out. The Chen heal as well. He's going for Chen. He will get the kill. TC currently on the run. Very, very nice coordination coming out from Liquid. Toggles the armlet just for safe measure. And unfortunately, Aoi not able to get anything done in the meantime. And Fest try to get a little bit of extra damage done. There's another Soul Assumption coming out from Fluff. Open wounds off by Aoi2000. Looks like he will be able to pick up the kill. And everyone else from Liquid still kind of lingering around this fight. Tide somehow, some way, sitting at about 10%, hasn't died. But it looks like Dignitas is not quite done yet. Troll Warlord is going to net on the Korok here, four staffs away. Gyrocopter does pick up the tower, so no to die there. I think that's what Liquid was going for. But all in all, the fact that Liquid was able to stop that team fight from happening, forcing Aoi to buy back and making sure they don't get Roche, very nicely done. Oh, absolutely. Very nicely done. And I mean, that could have been so much worse for Liquid, too. That wall, if that had hit up on everybody, they probably would have lost a lot more than just what they lost there. And TC did a very nice job as well, using that Phantasm here on the high ground, making sure that the Rocket Barrage, when flying off, would deal damage to the Illusions and not just himself. So he was able to take a lot of the damage, survive, turn around, and as well as get the kill, of course, on that Chen, who had to use that all-heal too. So, I mean, Liquid playing very nice. They're coordinated right now. Dignitas tried to go for that Roshan, but the Reality Rift came up on the high ground, took out Audi 2000, who could not use any of his spells because he was silenced with that Orc Malevolence, which we already talked about. So now, they're going to look to go for it again, it looks like. Dignitas is going to walk right back in. I mean, the wall is well available again. You talked about the low cooldown ults. I mean, they're all available for Dignitas, whereas the Phantasm, not so much for Cor or uh, TC, excuse me. In fact, there's very few ultimates up on the side of Liquid right now, but they're going to back out. This should be interesting. And yeah, Roshan's getting pretty low, but it looks like they're going to go for it. Blinding light inside the pit by IX Mike. There's the Orchid onto Aoi. Can they burst him down in time? Nice vacuum. Wall's going to hit a couple this time. Light Striker Ray is there to follow, and Aoi is going to be the first one to drop. Cooldown comes down as well. TC trying to do what he can here. He's very, very low on hit points at the moment. Fog making it up to the high ground, being chased down by Korok. Korok, unfortunately, not going to be able to get that kill. Tides, in the meantime, barely dodging the Illuminate, trying to walk back up. Throws out a Dragon Slay. Very nice armlet toggling by TC right there. Manages to live through it. And Liquid, once again, walks away with a very solid team fight win. And they could potentially take Roshan if this pesky Darkseer wall wasn't in the way. Yeah, that annoying Darkseer wall, and I thought for sure once that wall hit off that Dignitas had won that fight, but they were able to stick around. I think, once again, the Astral Imprisonment's doing a very nice job. I think as well, Ice Mike just doing damage with the Illuminate. Bulba had an excellent hook shot over here uh, in the trees, I believe, onto Fog, taking him down as well. I mean, just there was so much damage from both sides. It's just a surprise. It just shocked me, even, the fact that Dignitas wasn't able to take that fight, but the damage came out, the armlet toggling as well. Excellent job from TC. They did take that Roshan now, and they were looking good. They were looking a little bit sketchy earlier on in the game, but now they've got the pushing lineup going for them. They have the Vice Sash Familiars. TC's starting to get pretty farmed. He's, gonna, he's got his armlet going for BKB next, and of course, Korok sitting on that Orc Malevolence Ghost Scepter as well, too. So, uh, very nice place from Liquid, 17-14, to 14, and they're looking good. The thing that kind of scares me right now for Dignitas is that they've had an OD who's basically had an Orchid and a Midas and a Ghost Scepter now, and he's had the Midas for a very long time, probably, I would say, close to, what, 10-15 minutes or so? Which mm -hmm. means that he's only going to be getting more farmed. Aoi has gone for a totally mid-game oriented build. He's got his phase, armlet, drum, and then he has a thousand gold. He was forced to buy back during the last couple of team fights when the first time Liquid went into Rosha, managed to pick him off, and then he died again. 
and Dignitas couldn't get anything done in that time. So before we looked at the net worth and Korak was basically tied with three members of Dignitas, now Korak is almost doubling the highest person on Dignitas, and then he has the CK who is second to only him. So things are looking a little bit grim right now for Dignitas. They gotta try to find some team fight like they had top, get that vacuum wall down, get it in a big way, three or four, maybe even five if you can manage to do it, and then make sure the call down is there and the follow up from Lena is all strung together nicely. Otherwise, Liquid's gonna probably start being a little bit difficult to deal with, and oh man, hook shot onto Universe, here we go, Cogs out, Universe manages to get the vacuum off, Fall down coming down as well, and Aoi is going to instantly die. Very nice Orchid once again coming out from Korak. There's another Astral Imprisonment. Bubble being chased down by a rocket. He does have a haste room, by the way, and Universe is going to be dropping here as well. That's going to be two down already, and two of the most important members of Digitaz at that, and the Darkseer and the Life Stealer. So now, the Tier 2 under Siege, Age is still up on Korok, and again, Dignitas looking to be in a little bit of a rough position. Yeah, I mean, that hookshot was just so good. As soon as he gets that hookshot, the cogs go off the mana burn. I mean, it's just tough. You can't really... He couldn't do anything. He used the vacuum, but he didn't have enough for a wall or anything like that. So they couldn't defend it, really. Aoi gets focused down almost instantaneously. They're going to look for the Tier 3, and, I mean, there's no Glyph available. There's going to be the Phantasm, so... Liquid should be able to take at least the Tier 3, if not more, here. We're going to have to see if they want to fight with this. They still have the Aegis as well. They can play very aggressively, and they will. Oh, Reality Rift and Tides is probably going to have the Phantasm. Oh, actually gets mecked up there by way too, but nope, doesn't matter. TC still going to get the kill with his Phantasms. And Calldown trying to stop this push into the racks. Unfortunately, <clears throat> I don't believe it's actually going to be working out in favor of Dignitas here. The melee racks does fall. TC being chased by a homing rocket at the moment. Oh, nice hex on the Aoi. They turn around. Can they burst him down in time? Actually gets forced back a little bit. Three second Chaos Bolt. And yeah, that's a very, very dead Aoi 2000. Liquid trying to run away though. Two already down. CK and Korok. Korok, of course, going to be respawning courtesy of that Aegis. Actually pulls up the Imprisonment and instantly kills Fog. Very, very well done, and it looks like there's going to be four down in total, so Tide's going to be rezzing here in a second, but nope, Dignitas just going to tap out, calls the GG. Oh man, that Sanity's Eclipse just doing so much damage. Quark rising instantly and just says, all right, well, I guess I'm alone. It doesn't matter. He's going to get a triple kill because of it. It's GG already. The first game going to go to the side of Liquid playing very well, I got to say. An excellent game from them right now at 28 minutes. Man, that is a quick first game. It is a really fast game, but it's also kind of expected. When you look at a hero like OD, he snowballs incredibly fast. I mean, look at his farm. It's 28 minutes in. He has a Hex, an Orchid, a Ghost Scepter, Midas, and 2,500 gold. Just casual 16,000 net worth. Not even a problem yeah, for Korok. Yeah, it's totally That's like fine. He's, like, tripling everyone's net worth. I, the net worth graph is all messed up now because everyone left, but... All in all, I would say that Dignitas still had a pretty good shot in this game at, at the, around the 15 minute mark when they pushed top and then they defended very, very nicely when Liquid tried to take their tier 1. But ultimately, it was just kind of like their draft fell behind so far so fast because of that Orchid pickup by Korok that there was no way for Aoi to really do anything in teamfights. And Lifestealer isn't known as an innately tanky hero anyway, so very, very solid draft by Liquid, very solid play. Absolutely, you gotta hand it to him, but still there's a, another game to go at least, and of course there could be a game 3 if Dignitas is able to take it. I'm very surprised Aoi not able to get his farm, who's I mean, he's known as one of the best farmers in North America, but the draft was really good for Liquid, and hopefully we'll jump into the next game in just a second, so. Well, you heard it. We're gonna be going into game 2 versus Liquid and Dignitas here coming up in just a couple of minutes, guys, here on Killing Spree from Neo Dota. We'll be right back. <laughs> 